Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode, there is no app data directory. Stop lying. I'd tell them to stop, but I'm afraid they'd manage to screw that up. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. There is no app data directory. Stop lying. Hi all, just recall the story from many moons ago when I was in college doing internships when classes weren't happening because money. This is a day and age where interns still got paid decently, and undergrads weren't considered less valuable than burger flippers. The previous internship I'd done was with the same company, but in the consumer support division, so little old ladies and so, so many confused boomers would call in asking for help. I didn't mind the work, but having to brief people on where the start menu was in Windows XP 7 got tedious after the 100th time explaining it's in the bottom left corner, not the bottom right. Started this next round super excited to work in corporate support, I thought I'd be working with my people, and it would be more technical and challenging and less oh my god can you put someone with a brain on the phone please. Suffice to say, I was so very, very wrong. The company I worked for made and supported an antivirus, and no I'm not telling which one. When someone called and they were identified immediately, and the number of licenses they had for the product came up on the screen, this is important because it helps gauge the actual severity of an issue. Everyone who had at least one license got helped, make no mistake. Sadly though, numbers matter and someone with 2,000 or 10,000 clients with a mild issue would get escalated over someone with 10 who had a complete work stoppage because the antivirus got twitchy. All of this is background for the call. I answered the phone and this guy who made sure I actually added his job title and super important certifications to his contact information, network administrator and CCNA, for those curious, this officious windbag then informs me he is calling because his databases won't update on any of his clients. This is a very very common problem to have, if someone forgets to feed an internet hamster somewhere and a packet gets lost, the checksum won't match and the whole database gets flagged as invalid and starts throwing a tantrum. The solution takes all of 30 seconds, pause the antivirus which doesn't work without a signature database anyway, go to a folder in the app data directory, delete the database files, re-enable antivirus and update. Job done. I tell the network administrator, CCNA that this is a quick fix he'll have to apply to each client before they'll update again, and I'll walk him through it once so he knows how to do it. He immediately exclaims in shock and dismay that he's not going to 150 computers and repeating this process. Remember the license information I had to get before I could help? Yeah, homeboy had 12 licenses, and only 8 were active. Also bear in mind that this process was not hard to do with GPO or so many other things that could have made the process painless, but I think that would require Mr. Network Administrator, CCNA to dislodge his head from his rectum. But oh wait, it gets dumber. I calmly explain that there is no other solution for this particular problem, packets got dropped and the bad database needs to be cleared before the software will actually work. He huffs and says fine. Whatever. Consumer style I walk him through disabling the antivirus, and then ask him to type percent app data percent into the address bar of the file browser, and he says no. That's not a real location on his computer, and now he wants to speak to my supervisor, because I am clearly lying about where these files are located. At this point my professional reserve cracks, and I blurt out seriously? He then starts shouting about how serious he is and he'll have my job for this. He's a paying customer with 500 licenses, noticed that increase, did you, and he will not stand for being lied to in this manner. Enough's enough. I put him on hold and stood up to do the cubicle peek, my supervisor's cube was next to mine, and I was gobsmacked to discover that he'd actually been listening to my call. I was considered a problem child because of possibly valid reasons unrelated, and thus got my premium digs, he's actually got his face buried in his hands, and doesn't look up when I ask if I should transfer the call. He just nods. I inform Mr. Network Administrator, CCNA that he'll be transferred immediately and wish him a nice day. I go to the bathroom to splash water on my face and pinch myself to confirm this is real life, 
and not a nightmare before sitting back down, and before I can take the next call in the queue my supervisor gets my attention and asks me to come with him. We both walk over to the head of support's office. Head of support usually had the temperament of a grizzly bear with a sore tooth and a bad case of dingleberries. Hadn't heard him actually angry before this fateful call. Mr. Network Administrator, CCNA has worked himself up well into frothing rage at this point because he's been lied to three times by three different people about this nonsense apt at a folder. Now he's demanding a full refund of all 1,000 licenses he's purchased for the five years he's had them and won't be satisfied until all three lying support minions are fired and he gets that nice fat check. Head of support just has his fingers steepled and hasn't said anything since I've stepped into his office with my supervisor, I think he was just waiting for this clown shoe to wind down. Head of support gets his time to get a word in and uses it to fullest advantage. In an eerily calm voice he asks Mr. Network Administrator, CCNA if he's done, and says good before the man can actually respond. He goes on to say that this call is concluded, because Mr. Network Administrator, CCNA lacks the common sense to put his pants on before his shoes. He then clearly states that an adult needs to call in to resolve this issue, and it had better not be Mr. Network Administrator, CCNA or the three-year license they purchased a month ago will be invalidated because Mr. Network Administrator, CCNA accidentally disconnected the internet while updates were running on all his clients and was too stupid to follow basic instructions and clean up his own mess. We actually heard him say how did you before the hang up. Wound up actually helping that company fix the problem a couple days later when a nice lady called in, my guess is she was the most tech-savvy admin they had. Took all of five minutes for her to get the issue resolved completely. When I asked about Mr. Network Administrator, CCNA you could almost hear the eye roll. Apparently the dude had precisely zero certifications and hadn't actually graduated from any college. He got hired for data entry and volunteered to do network administration stuff for a small pay bump after a ransomware virus locked that whole company down and they needed someone immediately. He was allowed to resign after the details about the call came to light, I think the compulsive lying might have had something to do with it. Still have no idea how head of support pulled the Jedi mind trick about accidentally disconnecting the internet. Kind of bothers me, but I never mustered up the courage to ask. I'd tell them to stop, but I'm afraid they'd manage to screw that up. So to recap my background for those that haven't read my previous stories, I'm a server implementation engineer now. I travel the country installing the server backend that supports my company's products and train the customers on how to use it all, I also teach the local IT persons the proper care and feeding of the new server. So to briefly break down the workflow, sales sells the product, factory builds the hardware, project coordinators schedule the installs, and I roll on site to make it all work. However, this week has seen a huge breakdown in the project coordination. I was scheduled for several weeks ago for a customer, I would have flown out to Monday morning. When I reach out to the customer Thursday to confirm they were ready, they weren't. The project coordinators had put on the documentation that the customer purchased a new server through us, we work with a white box vendor selling commodity hardware on the server end. Except, the customer didn't purchase a new server. The project coordinator wrote down the customer's existing server, we do a bit of repeat business. Unfortunately the customer was hoping on upgrading this system to our newer software product, except that can't happen on the same iron since the new software runs on Linux and not Windows. Even if I could, the four-year-old server doesn't even meet our minimum spec. Sales should have told them it wasn't possible, but the sales guy, who is no longer with the company, naturally said whatever the customer wanted to hear. So I tell the project team, no server, no install. They need to kick it back to sales to figure out how to save this fuster cluck of a deal. The project never even should have gotten to me in the first place. I've worked on the project coordination team for a few weeks when I first started with this company. I cancel my travel arrangements and prepare for another week of doing work I self-scheduled for upcoming customers, makes my time in the field a bit less stressful. I go to bed Friday anticipating another week working from home with the dog at my side. Monday morning rolls around. Hey, 
Are you going to, other customer 100 miles away? I saw this job on my calendar, but did not get the assignment email from the project coordinators. So I booked last minute travel to that customer. Because the project managers didn't want to have to reschedule them for August. So I try reaching out to this customer. Their BYO server, no problem. We do physical, virtual, our server, your server, whatever. No answer, but the OGM matches the name on the documentation. I leave a voicemail and email my travel arrangements. I take off around 4 because I have an S o'clock flight in the morning. Doze off to find an email from the customer in my inbox when I wake to pack my suitcase we didn't know you were coming tomorrow. The whole point of our project coordinators is to document the installs, settle on SOW, and make sure I'm not doing something else. The dates they assign me to do a task should be knowledge to the customer before I even pick up the phone to speak to them. At least I can complete this customer even if they have as little preparation in advance as I have. To add insult to injury, between the microchip shortage and global shipping in all tons of disarray my install for next week has been cancelled. The server in SAN will not be delivered this week and probably not next week either. But when the project manager for that project discovered no server next week asked me can you do anything? My reply was no, I can't. No server, no install. I also wanted to add all I'll be able to do is sit around and look impressive. The good news though, I'm actually a few steps ahead on a server migration for a customer near my hometown where some kinfolk of mine still farm. Yes, I use kinfolk. I may live in the city, but I'm still country fried.